in the year 2000, I went on what I call the world tour, where I went to all the jails surrounding Las Vegas from accumulated traffic tickets that I didn't pay that turned into warrant. And North Las Vegas jail was the last place that I landed. While I was in North Las Vegas, the Lord was really on my heart. So upon getting there, I asked the jail guard for a Bible and he came back with the New Testament and Psalms Bible, put it in my top pocket and read it before bed. Well, one night I was uh, reading my Bible and then um, they called break time. So I went out where everybody else was and was trying to play cards with somebody, but nobody knew how to play this card game that I used to play called Casino. So I went around asking people, no one knew how to play it. I look across the jail and I see this brother sitting in the corner playing cards by himself. So I walk over to him and uh, I ask him, hey brother, you know how to play Casino? And he was like, yeah, I'm not gonna play casino. Have a seat. So I sat down next to him and he was like, are you still having those nightmares? And I got some chills down my back and I looked at him and I said, what you mean? Those nightmares. And at that moment, I had so many chills running down my spine, the hair on my arms was standing up because the night before, this night here, before we went to bed, you know, the night before, I was reading revelations in my Bible in bed before I went to sleep. And, uh, well, I started dreaming that I was looking at a green pasture and uh, I was looking around and I turned around and I saw this like a log style house, log cabin style house. Uh, sitting in a real green pasture and this house was had big windows in the front and uh, trees all around and I looked and uh, I saw my best friend who was killed and he took me by my shoulder and started walking with me and showing me his house in heaven so I'm looking and he asked me to come in and I came inside and now I'm looking around his house and his house don't have no furniture. It's just marble or gold floor, uh, really shiny gold floor and windows. And we were standing there staring out his window and he had his hand on, on my shoulder and I remember I was crying and I, I was weeping and he kept telling me that he's all right, this is where he's at. This is where he's at. Don't worry about nothing. And as we were looking out the window, I could see his dogs were running back and forth out in the in the field, in the grass, in the prairie. And, uh, you know, uh, they, they were happy, like they were living in harmony and running and, you know. And I saw, uh, I saw this wood, wooden log fence all the way off in the distance. 
and uh, like he had a big property and that was the edge of his property was the wooden log fence and everything was so green and so beautiful and you know like everything was in harmony and I sat there and I was looking at the house with him and uh, was just sitting there crying and then all of a sudden I kind of faded out of where I was and started going down this hallway and now I'm like where am I at and I'm looking at this hallway so I walk down the hallway and I see a door on the left and it's cracked open and there's a little bit of light coming out of it and I'm like walking towards the door I'm like let me see what's inside so I open the door and I'm looking at this room with a mattress in the middle of the floor and at the foot end of the bed there was two kids a little boy and a little girl were sitting at the edge of the bed and they as if they were watching TV they were watching a mirror that was set in front of them on the ground like someone pulled it off the dresser and set it on the ground and they were sitting in front of the mirror and uh, there was a woman in the mirror and it looked like she was floating like in water and she was beautiful and the kids were interacting with her and I noticed she looked at me and realized I was it I was there and she was like come here come in here with me come with me and I was like oh man I started thinking about scary movies and things and you know that's the type of stuff that go through my mind when I see something evil you know the mirror mirror on the wall you know all that stuff like I leave that alone but this woman was in this mirror and trying to get me to come in and I turned around and the kids was gone and I looked back and she was still there so I backed out of the room and I was like, oh, I gotta get away. And I started running back up the hallway. And man, when I got to the end of the hall, I was in a living room. And I was surrounded by people in the middle of like a funeral. And there was a funeral going on. And there's people crying and mourning and women and children and old people and I mean, elderly people, excuse me. Uh, but I was in a funeral, and I was trying to figure out whose funeral is this? And, you know, the it looked like the people were Latino having a funeral, and I was just looking around, and everyone had scary looks on their faces. And, I, man, I wound up running out of the house, and I ran all the way out and turned around and looked at the house and lo and behold it was one of my really good friends houses I was standing in front of looking out and I just remember like waking up and thinking man I just saw a, a woman in the mirror trying to get me to come into the mirror with her I'm glad that I can go in there man now getting back to the guy I was playing cards with now I'm sitting there and he's asking me are you still having those nightmares so right away I, I'm thinking about the visions that I just had the night before but that's not what he was talking about he was talking about something a little bit deeper. Since I was a kid, I've been suffering from sleep paralysis. And, uh, you know, it had always messed with me and I never knew how to get rid of it until I went to jail. And I looked at him and was like, what do you mean? 
He said, well, are you still getting held down in your sleep? And I said, yeah, how do you know that? It's like, I know a lot of things, or I know a few things, is what he said. And then he was like, well, let me tell you something, brother. There's only one way for you to fight them. And I looked at him, I was like, please tell me how. And I knew there was something special about this brother. He had a real angelic presence about him. But he said, he looked at me dead in my eyes, and he said, brother, you have to say the name of Jesus off the tip of your tongue while you're sleeping. That's the key. So I said, well, it makes sense because uh, I remember one time being held down in my sleep. They lifted me up and started walking me in a circle. I was floating almost. And I got to the bottom of the bed as they were walking me in a circle. And I felt like I was going to fall. And I said, Jesus. And I was right back in the middle of my bed. I was telling him this. So he's like, brother, listen to me. You have to say the name of Jesus Christ off the tip of your lips. But listen to me. They're going to make it hard for you. And I was like, they're going to make it hard for me? What you mean? And all of a sudden, a uh, jail guard called uh, lights out. So we had to go back to our bunks. And I said, man, I'm going to talk to you tomorrow and stuff. And I went back to my bunk and I uh, laid there pondering, wondering who this brother was. I woke up in the morning, breakfast time, 4.30 a.m. I'm looking around the building. I don't see the brother anywhere. So I'm like, sitting down, I'm like, did you guys see me playing cards with somebody over there last night? And the only guy that really was paying attention to me was like, you was over there playing cards by yourself. And I was like, no, nah, I was over there talking to somebody. So I asked the guard, I said, guard, did you guys release anybody last night? And the guard was like, nope, we don't release anybody till about, I think he said after 8 or 9 a.m. And I was like, man, hold on. I was in here talking to somebody and playing cards with them all night long until they called lights out. And then I wake up in the morning and he's nowhere to be found. He was an angel and he was gone. And I was like, man, that was crazy. So like ever since then I started really believing in angels and things, you know. I, I know that God had sent him to me to tell me how to fight this evil spirits that I've been fighting since I was a kid. And that brother, he said, man, listen, you have demons riding you. And he even directed me to a person that he wanted me to go see. But long story short, I got out of jail a few weeks. Hey everybody, this is where the movie ends and things get serious because I really want you to understand that I didn't create this movie to to get the best editor award on YouTube or anything like that. Um, let me get down to the whole reason why I wanted to make this movie. Um, 
No. I went to jail and I had those visions. And I met a brother in there that I believe was an angel who showed me how to fight these demons riding me, the sleep paralysis is what the medical world calls it, you know. Um, God sent that angel, it might have been God, it might have been my best friend that got killed that showed me his house in heaven, you know. But what I want to tell you, I want to finish the rest of the story up close and personal with you. So you, you can really, really understand and really feel how serious this is. This is a, this is not a game. This is not a joke. You know, we, there's spirits out here that are trying to kill the saints, trying to kill the prophets of God. And it's a Jezebel spirit, okay? So I'm going to start by telling you how it all manifested and how my vision came to reality, okay? So I get out of North Las Vegas.